Hey folks, welcome back to the Prep, Set, and Go. We're at step number four, navigation and library components. Let's jump right into Dreamweaver, open up the storyboard page. This is what we'll be using as a guideline. Now, if you already have an existing site and you didn't go through the storyboard section, not a problem. One thing I'd like to let you know, when you're creating a new site to replace an existing site, if your pages have already been spidered by search engines, make sure that you create your replacement page using exactly the same document name as your current page. And these are the document names over here because Google spiders pages by the document name, not by the content necessarily in the page itself. I mean, it does spider that information, but it knows if a page has been updated by the page name itself. So if you create new pages or new page names to replace old ones, Google will not know that. So any search engine, um, advancements that you've made with those existing pages, you'll probably lose them unless you simply create new pages using the same file name. Okay, now with that said, let's talk about updating the navigation. Uh, let's jump to a preview of our site to start with. Okay, here's our demo site. We'll update the nav bar to start with. Now the nav bar, you can have it link, the buttons link to a page, like the home page for example. If it shows a little drop arrow, like the little white arrow you see in this example here, that means that this is a title button and if you click it, it opens up a sub menu. Now you can have a title button open a sub menu, or you can remove the entire sub menu and have that button act as a regular button, much like the home page. So if we were to go to the about our staff, of course, I was just playing around with links in the previous demo there. So here we go to the contact us page. And if we click on the home button here, it'll take us back to the home page. All right. So that's how the top level button can work. It can either activate a sub menu or it can link directly to a page, but it cannot link to a page and activate a submenu. It just wouldn't work very well on mobile devices or tablets. It actually wouldn't work at all. That's why it can only function in one of two forms. Okay, so with that said, let's jump back into Dreamweaver. And what I did is I just sort of, usually I'll, I'll create some sort of a list. Here are the button names I want for the top level. In other words, here are the button names I want to show up right here. And then I sort of create a little bit of a list. I sort of darken or use a bold. I just bold the text. Uh, if I want this to be a sort of a title button and if it's going to have sub pages below it. For example, about will actually have the about for zoo, contact the site map and privacy policies as a sub menu. For tournaments, I'm going to use, uh, I'll have upcoming tournaments and tournament results as the two pages in the sub menu. So about and tournaments will not actually link to any pages. They'll just simply activate a sub menu. And in the sub menu, that's where we'll be linking to the pages. Now I'm going to jump right into the library folder and show you how to make these updates. So let's go to the library page or the library folder, open up the shared folder and then the menu top. Now, believe it or not, you look at this and go, whoa, what's all this information? First of all, the phone number up here is another library page that's simply embedded into this library page. When you update the phone LBI page right here, it will also update this number. Down below, we load in the contact form. So if we looked at our demo, that'd be the phone number there, which only shows up in mobile view at the top of the menu. But the contact form, when you expand it, you see we have a name address, very simple way for your visitors to get a hold of you. And you don't need to really update this at all. We'll talk about that in a later uh, video in more detail. Uh, but for now, you don't need to touch it in the menu top page whatsoever. So with that said, all you really need to do is take a look at the menu top and make your changes and updates. But we see that we have all this, all these demo links, these example links in here, and you don't need them. I'm going to show you something really cool. We've taken the bootstrap menu and we've tweaked it a little bit so that it's incorporated into the default spry widget or the menu widget that's built into Dreamweaver. So basically, if you were to click on any one of these links to start with, here's what I typically do when I start building a menu. I'll click on the home link right here. I'll go down to my quick tag selector. I'll find where it says UL menu and I'll click it. Look at that. When you do, it activates the menu bar tool or the widget. From here, you can quickly add and remove menu buttons without ever getting your hands dirty in HTML. So usually what I'll do is I'll start with the pages and you can see when I click on pages, it shows all the sub menus below it. If I want to remove pages and all the sub menus, I just click on the remove menu item. Do I want to delete this and all of its children? Yep. And I do the same with sliders. 
and features and available enhancements. I just get rid of everything I don't need. Then I start fresh. Don't remove the home button. You remove that, you're going to break the menu. It makes sense to have a home button on every page. So just leave that there for now. We'll talk about how to change that in later videos. But for this, the purpose of this video, just leave it there. All right. To add a new button, and let's go back and refresh ourselves. We wanted home, about, tournaments, tea times, and photos. So let's go and create those, shall we? We'll hit the add. We'll call it about. Then we'll hit the plus sign. And we'll call it tournaments. Then we'll hit the plus sign. And we'll call it photos. And what else did we have there? Oh, tea times and photos. Hey, not a problem. I'm going to put my cursor there. Hit the plus sign. See how it inserts it between? Yeah. Tea times. Great. So now I've created my top level buttons. Now I can create the sub menu buttons. Um, first, let's click the about and I'm going to go over to the add menu item. I'm going to add a link for about for zoo, contact, site map and privacy policies. I could even copy and paste just like that. Contact us. I can go back, hit the plus button. This is just such a WYSIWYG tool. Once you, once you start playing around with it, you'll figure it out in no time. Right? That's why we love this tool so much. Okay. So now I've got the about, and it's got the four links below it. Okay. And you notice once I click out of the box or out of the field, it actually updates the, the name. Yet another bonus. So we have tournaments. So we have upcoming tournaments. So we'll click on tournaments, hit the plus sign, enter that, go back, tournament results, add, enter, paste, and boom. Great. So now I've got about or home about tournaments, tea times and photos. I've got all the sub menus in there. Now all that's left to do is actually link these buttons up to the pages I want them to uh, link to. That's pretty simple. Now the about page, whenever you add a menu item, it adds this pound sign. That's called a full link, uh, uh, what we call a, um, a pseudo link. Okay, so there's the about button. We want to keep that pound sign there. We don't want to remove that because we want the, the button to use a pseudo link so that the, it acts as a button. It just doesn't link anywhere. But we do want to connect the pages below it to actual pages in our site. And to do this, we just select about for zoo, for example. Click on the Browse button, and for Zoo Team, select the page and click OK. Contact, Browse, Contact, OK. And I'm going to go through and I'm going to link all my submenus up to the actual pages. OK, submenus are done. Now I'm going to finish off with the tea times and the photos. I'm just going to click on tea times, click that, and we got Book a Tea Time, and Photos. Zoo photos and that's it. You know what? That's it. We're done. We have now updated the nav bar by using the uh, menu bar widget tool. We're just going to save our changes and then we'll preview it in our web browser. Uh, one thing I did want to note just so you're aware, I had my index page open in my browser the entire time. A very important thing that I do when I'm updating anything in a library file is I keep the web page open in a browser so I just have to hit the refresh tool or the refresh button to see my changes. And the other important thing I do is I will keep my library page open until I've checked it in the browser. I've made sure that I don't have any typos, that my links actually link to existing pages and not something I've linked incorrectly, that it looks good and that anything I've made changes to I would be happy with putting up to the web. If not, I can simply go back to my library page. I can use Control Z or Control Z on my keyboard. I can undo the changes that I've made and then start fresh because it's a lot easier to undo and try again than it is to open up a page and try and figure out where you went wrong. Because typically by the time you're at that point, it's almost easier to drag in a copy of say the menu top library page or a, a copy of another page and start over again than it is to try and figure out where the errors came from. Okay, so let's go and preview our page, like so. We're just going to hit the refresh button. There we go. Oops, I was just playing around there. So about, we have the four links. 
tournaments. We have the two links, exactly what we want. Tea times takes us right to our for zoo book a tea time page. Perfect. Now, one of the things you may have noticed is the home button has a nice little icon here, but the new buttons does not. The contact button, for example, does. That's something called font awesome. That's a little bit more advanced, and we have another chapter that talks about adding icons to links and text in your site. But I'm not going to cover that off right now because it is a little bit of a read. Um, although Font Awesome is absolutely cool, it's just it's something you have to do by hand in the code view. That's the only way we can get it to work, or we've seen it work at this point in time uh, because it is fairly new as well. But um, we do have a video, we do have instructions that cover the whole thing of working with Font Awesome icons and adding them to your, your web pages. So um, for now, we're just going to skip past that and we're going to move on to the rest of the library items. And to update the, the rest of the library items, open up your sh library shared folder. And starting with the footer LBI page, open up the footer LBI. And at this point in time, this is basically like a regular web page or content from a, a, a regular web page. And what you need to do is just keep your page previewed, sort of scroll down to the footer section, quick links, let's get social, get in touch, and yours will probably look different depending on which template you have. Uh, but from this point on, this is just a H3 heading tag. This is a bullet list with link text. Same thing down here. We have icons. We have the get in touch. It's all just regular HTML sort of content that you would change. Right here we have just little icon pictures. If you click on it, you can see the source and link to a new one or there's a link to a web page, you can change a link to the web page right here. So I'm not going to go into great detail on how to change the content within the library or the shared library pages because it's fairly straightforward stuff at this point on. If you want some more detail, read up on the working with the footer in the tutorial section. Um, but at this point in time, I'm going to just sort of point out a couple of highlights of how these pages are put together and you probably have enough information you know if you've worked in Dreamweaver before to figure it out from that point forward right so after the footer we have the Google search once again that is something when you open up there's simply a key in the Google search that when you create your own Google search code in your Google account it's going to create a key for your website you would copy and paste the key right in this place here again this is another component that has a more detailed tutorial which I would suggest you go through. Same with the graphic logo. The graphic logo, that's the little image we see on the page right here. Your site may or may not have a graphic logo, but simply swapping a new image is as simple as dragging a new image onto the graphic logo library page and replacing this one here. Or you could double click and you could browse to somewhere else in your website and select a different image for your logo if you wanted to do that. All right now the menu top we've already talked about. The phone, that's just a simple bit of text on the page. This one however I suggest switching to code view. That way you get to keep the font awesome icon for the telephone because chances are you're not going to be changing the icon for this particular component. This is it right here. It's a little telephone icon as you can see. You're going to change the number, but it's still going to be a telephone number. So it makes sense to just switch to code view. There's the phone number in black. Just change that. The social icons. I'll switch to design view. Here we go. Once again, we have a little bit more detailed tutorial that show you how to update the social icons. And it's as simple as selecting it. And you can update the link down here in the link field. Or you can even use the point to file tool or the browse to file tool to select another icon in the list. As simple as that. If you don't want one, select it and delete it. The tagline, open that up, just a straight bit of text. The only thing special about this is it's wrapped in a heading 4 tag. When you're done, make sure that your formatting is set to heading 4. Text links, these are just some basic text links that are on the page. I'll just show you here in our example. Here we go. Once again, there's something that uses the font awesome icon. You may find that editing, editing the information here in the code view is a little bit easier for you because you can keep the icons. Right, there's the page it links to. 
the text in black is the name that shows up on the page. Right? Finally, we have the, uh, we'll skip past the themed object because that's just a, very much like the graphic logo. It allows you to display an image on the page. We have a chapter, once again, dedicated to the themed object and, and adding additional images to your page and positioning them in the header. Right? And finally, we have the website name. The website name, just a regular bit of text. This time, it's wrapped in a heading three tag. So once you've made your, your new heading, uh, Razu Golf, for example, just make sure that when you select the text that it shows heading three is the formatting. So once you've gone through some of those pages, made some of your updates, you're actually ready to go. You can take a look at the actual instructions for some of the specific components I mentioned earlier, simply because we don't want this video to go on for too long. We've already covered that information in other video tutorials. But it gives you an idea of what's on the page and whether you can just quickly update it at this point in time or you may want to go and read or, read or watch a video for a little bit more detail. And really that's it for the prep, set, and go. We've got our pages created, we've updated our navigation, we've taken a look at some of the shared library items and updated those. Now you can take a look at your pages, start adding content, take a look at some of the different image components in, and the instructions for the image components to see if you want to change images, update captions, that sort of a thing, and really start to customize your website. But now you have what's called a skeleton a base that you can work from. You have the pages, you have the majority of the library, the global components updated. Now you can start to get really specific, start to fine tune things, and add your content.